Hello. A family is meant to last a lifetime, but it's not set in stone. I used to think I was the only one who just wanted to end it all and move on with my life. Turns out there were others who would rather run away than work things out together. I want to be cut off from me. I had to live unhappily because of my older brother who always caused trouble, and my father, who always would defend my brother as his eldest. I am sending my story to talk about it. My childhood wasn't very happy. My dad always treated me differently from my older brother Alexander. His attitude was so different that people around me misunderstood my father as my stepdad. It was so bad that at one time I believed it. Two, you can tell what kind of mindset my father had just by looking at how he named. He named my older brother Alexander to rise to greatness like the famous King Alexander. He named me Martha to be a forever faithful servant like in the Bible. Was it because of that? My father never did anything for me yet. He demands a fill piety from me. My older brother monopolized my dad's love just because he was my dad's firstborn and a son. In contrast, no matter how hard I tried, I could not receive even one-tenth of my father's intention that was given to my brother on a dad's dad. When it comes to one's children, when the fingers are bitten, every one of them is painful. However, to my dad, the only painful finger was my brother and not me. If my brother showed a tiny bit of any talent. My dad would pour money into my brother's education no matter how expensive. He would always encourage my brother, even when he didn't perform well. And when my brother got into trouble, my dad would just excuse him by saying that boys will be boys. While my dad embraced my brother's fault so warmly, he rejected to acknowledge. Any artistic talent I showed from young and never supported me saying that no investment was needed for a girl. He wouldn't let me enroll in any extracurricular programs, so I had to do it all alone. I practiced a piano hard by watching internet videos, which enabled me to be in charge of the accompaniment at. I also participated in art competitions and received a majority of the prizes with the skills I learned in the school art classes. However, my dad never said a word to compliment me. Rather, he was more concerned that my achievements would overshadow my brother than one day. My mother died suddenly in a car accident. After that, my father's preferential treatments of my brother got. When I asked my dad to buy me some clothes, he scolded me saying I didn't need any since I had the school uniform. When I asked for some allowance, he ignored me saying no money was available for a girl. On the other hand, my dad bought clothes, bags, and shoes, all top luxury brands for my brother. It was so bad that people thought my brother was the son of a wealthy family because my father treated him so royal. My brother became more like a spoiled brat because of my father's abusive behavior toward me. My brother also started to treat me like a maid for a girl. How come your cooking is so bad being like that? How could you ever get married? Since my mother passed away. I had to do all the household chores, such as cooking, cleaning, and doing the laundry. But rather than being grateful, my brother criticized me at every chance. He would complain that the food was too bland or too salty to no end. I felt like the abuse Cinderella. When I couldn't take it anymore, I would rebel against my brother and fight back. However, each time my dad only sighed with my brother. Your brother is only worried that you'll get kicked out by your husband for your bad cooking after you get married. That's how my dad and my brother ganged up against me and blamed me for everything. Whenever they did that, I hated being at home. My dad could only see his son who resembled him and not me. Dad used to take out his childhood photos and would compare with the pictures of my brother proudly bragging that they looked alike as if they had some kinds of superior gene. My brother was definitely my daddy's pet. My dad spoiled my brother so much that he will never let Alexander carry anything. Instead, he will make me a girl, carry it. However, it was the opposite in school at that time. I attended the same school with my brother, and we were quite well known. 
I mean, in terms of being totally opposite, my brother was the worst troublemaker. Since the school was founded, and everyone recognized me as a model student in terms of class levels. My brother was always in the lower level. While I was always in the upper level and maintained the first ranking. Even there, I received a majority of the prizes from outside competitions becoming famous from the whole student body. Unlike me, my brother was acting like a punk, smoking and drinking, and even the police came to our school because of his steeds from joining bad street gangs. In the end, he really did get himself into trouble with the law and ended up at the juvenile detention center. When my brother became incarcerated by the youth authority, our school actually became very peaceful for. It used to be that the students who were studying late in the library would opt to go home early. The minute they saw my brother entering because they feared him, my dad was busy trying to settle all the trouble my brother had created. When my brother was incarcerated, my dad would visit him practically every day and made me make some food to take it to. My brother was sent to jail to be punished, and even though I told my dad that no outside food was allowed, he ignored me. Of course, the food ended up in the trash. My dad's catering to my brother worsened when he was in jail. I was so ashamed at school about my brother being in jail. However, I was fortunate to have friends who treated me well despite my brother. Thanks to them I was able to continue my school life smoothly. I may have been unfortunate to have my family, but I was fortunate to have good friends. My family treated me like a housemate, but other people around me always care for me because of my high grades. I was able to enter a top university. However, my happiness was short-lived because I learned going to college requires a substantial sum. Since you got accepted at a top university, you could earn money to support yourself by tutoring or working part-time. My dad simply told me to earn my own tuition and expenses. It was challenging to attend college without any help from my family. I had to fight for scholarships every semester and work part-time in between to earn a living. Thanks to my cheerful and active disposition, I was able to find tutoring jobs and even post as the school promotional model, which provided a great fulfillment. When I was attending college, my brother convinced dad to finance his acting school even though his only asset was being tall. However, he joined the wrong talent agency and ended up paying penalties to get himself released from the oppressive. He hasn't grown up. Acting isn't for anybody but dad even got a second job as a taxi driver to provide financial support for my brother. My dad had no interest in me to the extent that he didn't even know what my major was. I was sick and tired of my family and I have been thinking to leave home to stand on my own. In that sense, getting married offered a good excuse to escape from home. I got married early on purpose. Of course, the biggest reason was that I loved my husband, but in the corner of my heart escaping from home played a big part. When the reality of my marriage became evident, my dad, who had never paid any attention to me, suddenly was against my boyfriend's job and did not approve of our marriage. What kind of job is that to be an art instructor at a spa academy? How will much money be earned from? You should be in business or become a government employee. My dad showed us disdain outright comparing my husband's job. To those of his friend's sons-in-law from being an accountant to the story of them supporting their wife's family. Putting down my husband right in front of his face. While dad was so generous for his son, he applied the strictest standard to his prospective son-in. However, my husband did not show his being offended, but smiled and said. I understand your concerns, but I'm very confident I can make your daughter very happy. In truth, my in-laws weren't well off and my husband's salary wasn't much. But I decided to marry him from watching how he patiently handled himself trying to please my father. He was very different compared to my dad and my brother. Then my brother interrupted saying, hey, then I could bring my friends, right? He wanted to bring 30 people he befriended from the juvenile detention center to feed them free at the wedding banquets. In addition, he insisted that even if I got married, I had to provide financial support for the family. 
I became speechless at my brother's selfishness, trying to use me to there. I got married under such circumstances. We got no help from either side of the families and had to start humbly, but I felt happiness for the first time in my life. I learned the meaning of a family for the first time because my in-laws were so nice to me at my in-laws. Everyone, including my father-in-law and brother-in-law, gathered around to make meals during the holiday. They did not force me to make sacrifices under the name of a family. Instead, they always thanked me. At first, I was confused when they treated me so kind. I grew up where my father would make a big fuss for days before my brother's birthday, but he would never remember mine. Therefore, receiving attention and compliments from my in-laws made me feel uncomfortable and I was living happily receiving love and attention that I had never received from my own family. When I heard about my brother from my dad one day, my dad said that my brother got into debt in the amount of $300,000. My brother embezzled money from his work because he fell for a woman who broadcast life online and spent money on her. He is really something. He always was a womanizer and now he steals money to impress a woman he doesn't even know. He's so pathetic. Just tell him to go and kill himself. I spat harsh words on my father who was grieving that my brother had to go to prison. I felt my father contributed a lot to my brother being like that. Then my dad, since it turned out like this, we have to solve it. Please get a loan to pay for it. Brother's debt. As a sister, you should do a lease debt. I couldn't believe it. How could he ask me to pay the debt of $300,000? Dad, are you crazy? I'm not wealthy. Where could I get such an enormous amount? And why do I have to do that? Dad, you should wake up too. That fool will never grow up because you are always cleaning up after a mess. And if you have any conscience, you shouldn't have called me to give you any money. What did you say when my husband first came to see you? You put him down saying he was poor. Don't you remember how you mistreated? Then now what? Give you $300,000. Is that why you insisted that I marry a rich man so that you can benefit financially? Well, that's too bad because we are poor. Without any house or a car in our name, you have more money than us. You should sell the house that you're living in now and take care of your favorite son's deaths. I yelled at him coldly because I intended never to see my father. I refused to listen to my dad's subsequent tyros and me and just hung up the phone. I even changed my phone number that day. I also changed my husband's phone number. I stopped the automatic payment I was making to my dad's account to help. I was done with being a sucker. Finally, later I heard from my relatives that my dad did sell his house. As I said, move to a small rental and pay my brother's debts. It was indeed a heartbreaking, fatherly love. If my father had invested that money me, I could have gone to a better university to get a higher paying job to help him out. I felt my father brought it on to himself. Anyway, after many years I became pregnant and got a very pretty daughter. My husband stopped working as an art instructor and began a character business that he had always dreamed. In the beginning, he had no income, so I had to help him, but after a year, he found an investor and revived his business. However, just receiving the investment was at the end because my husband's company was too small and lacked advertising the major problem with STAT. No one knew about his products. I couldn't just watch on the side. So, I started to visit all the big department stores to promote the characters made by my husband's company. I also opened a blog, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook to promote my husband's company and its character releases. Unfortunately, compared to all the effort made, the results were almost nil. We got to the point where we had to return the investment. However, there's always some salvation at the end of the tunnel in life. I was attending an event at a trade show, and I met an angel to rescue us in a way that I had never expected. A very famous actress who was renowned for being a great homemaker, 
an interior decorator, practically bought all the items at my husband's company booth. She said that she wanted to give them as gifts to her friends. Anyhow, our products got exposed at a TV entertainment show where she was a guest. And our product became the top real-time search word at the portal sites and received a tremendous response. We hit the jackpot practically overnight with a barrage of pouring orders. So, thanks to the actress, my husband's products were able to advance onto online home shopping. Influenced by that. The blog and the Instagram promotions that I put up started to get high hits resulting in increase and even more sales. When we got blasted with success and money, I felt happy to be alive at last. That is until my father and my brother came to see us. I don't know how they found our address, but they suddenly came to ours. Unfortunately, our daughter was there, so I couldn't turn them away. I let them in reluctantly. As soon as they entered, they acted as if nothing happened between us. And started acting friendly, saying how pretty my daughter is and giving her money and so forth. I let my husband take our daughter out and began talking. Didn't we decide not to see each other? What brings you here? I felt bad inside to see my father's face thin and with more wrinkles. But I couldn't easily accept him if I showed any weakness. I had a bad premonition that I would be sucked into their scheme again. They seemed to be surprised at my cold attitude. They exchanged glances and suddenly nailed in front of me. My dad. It's all my fault. I was trying to raise the children all by myself, so I was not in the right mind and didn't give you the attention as my daughter. Please forgive me. I was shocked at the unexpected scene in front of me. I asked my dad what he was doing and told him to get up. Then they misunderstood me as my gesture to forgive them as if he waited. My brother started to say their purpose for coming to see. I heard the news. You earned some big money, right? You should share the good news with your family. Why didn't you call? We are family. Everyone was envious after hearing the good news. When I looked at my brother's face, I could see clearly why they came to see me. Of course, you never me. You smell money and that's why you're here. Don't waste time and get to the point. Why are you here? You're not asking me to solve whatever trouble you got yourself into again, are you? I spat out without thinking, but as soon as I blurted out the two looked surprised as if caught with their hands in the cookie jar. At that point, my brother frowned. My father looked nervously at my brother and intervenes this fool may matter worse. Even though he was trying to solve a problem as the head of the house. I was dumbfounded when I saw that my father couldn't finish his sentence. What did he again give money to a live broadcaster online or did he lose money? Gambling at a casino, I sped out ridiculous, trying to suppress my anger. Then my brother still being proud, couldn't stand to hear my ridiculous and stomped out of the room. However, my father remains begging. Your brother was trying to get our house back and started to do stocks and even use Mafia's money. If he doesn't repay $600,000, your brother will be dead. My father plopped down on the floor and started to sob the house and the car have been already sold. So, what can we do? I fear that your brother will commit suicide. Last night I even had a dream where your mother started to sub worrying about your brother. To me, my dad was even using my mom trying to get my sympathy. However, I did not bat an eye and said, Dad, are you now resorting to even using my mom's name? You haven't changed a bit. If you have the time to come here, you should try to educate your stupid son. Instead, for him to say that he was trying to get the house back rather than trying to earn money by working, he gambled with stocks. Did. Is that the mind of a sane person? Are you telling me to help such a fool? I refuse. Even if I have tons of money rotting, I won't do that. That you're mistaken. It's more of your fault for Alex being like that. You have ruined your own son. 
If you come here again, I will call the police. So take the fool out of my house. I screamed at him. My dad cleared at me in anger. You have better think it over. You can't take money with you when you die. And if you ignore your own flesh and blood risking death, won't you feel guilty? Don't you realize I'm asking you for your own good? Yeah. Just like a cat does a mouse. How could you dare to talk about feeling guilty to me? Don't you have any conscience, Dad? In fact, I even changed the name you gave me to serve you completely. So don't expect me to do a daughterly duty from me. A mere $600,000. That's right. It's not a great sum to me. However, I'll never give it to you why I'm no longer your sucker. So, it will be better for your health to cut off your ties with Alex too. That's the last advice I will give you as your daughter. My dad's mouth was open looking shocked, but I pushed him out of the house and locked the. Later I heard the rumors that my brother had forged my dad's signature to do credit card frauds and ended up in prison. And my dad was working as a day laborer to make the ends meet daily. My relatives told me to help my dad, but I will never do that in the name of family. They did nothing but tried to ruin my life. I plan to punish them by ignoring them. They need to feel in their bones how it feels to be abandoned. If they are human beings, they need to pay for their wrongdoings. I hope that you all live happily treasuring each other without forcing family responsibilities and sacrifices. I plan to care for my precious family. I have now. Thank you for listening to my story. Please cheer for me and write your comments of wisdom in the comment section. Pressing like and subscription is a big help to me. Have a wonderful day.